morning all. So in this video, I'm going to go through the process to make up a spliced feather to match this one. So these could be two secondary feathers and then have another alternating one as your knocking feather or this could be a decorative knock feather on a set for the plain white second pair. Um, this is a fairly simple splice, um, three colours. Even simpler again would be two splices with just a pin stripe. Uh, but I'm going to go through how I achieve this look for a feather. So first thing we need is the tools. A sharp knife with a very fine blade. This, bla uh, this knife has a very fine blade. You could also use something like a craft knife or a Stanley knife. That would work really well also. Some uh, rapid set super glue. A pen or a pencil, just for marking on the feather. A ruler in inches or millimetres, whichever one you want to run for the feather cuts. A cutting template and the three feathers that you're going to be working with. So I have, to make up this feather, I have a white base to make the front of the feather. So I'm using a white base. And then my two splicing colours are a dark brown and a black. So, first thing I need to do is, this is a five inch feather. So I'm going to work out where in <clears throat> the length of quill my black and brown feathers match up pretty well. So I'm going to use the front of this black feather here probably to get a splice. So I want to match it a little bit to the quill. And the same on the brown. This brown feather is pretty even uh, in terms of the same width as the white. So it will sort of fit in anywhere pretty well. And then because they're going to fit pretty nicely, I'm just going to clip this white feather about here. And I'm going to mark five inches. It's a five inch feather. Five inches is there. I'll just put a score. Just a little score. You could also just put a pencil line. And then I'm going to clip that one off. The white piece you can put aside. You might be able to use it. This other small white piece, you could probably use that too later on. That one's now cut to length. That's our base feather. So we're going to put that aside for now. <clears throat> Next step. The black and brown, we need to peel these feathers to get the, the feather membrane itself off the quill. So to do that, what you need to do is at the back of the feather, put a very small cut just in through the membrane and then begin to peel it up. And you just very, very carefully peel that membrane up off the quill. Now, some feathers peel better than other feathers. Black feathers tend to be the color that's the hardest to peel. This one's not been too bad so far. But feathers with a very stiff quill usually work a lot better than feathers with a softer quill. They're easier to peel. So just very slowly work your way down. Just keeping that membrane nice and clean. I'm gonna try and keep any quill particles off the membrane because it's going to mean a needed glue join when you put the splices in. So I'm nearly at the end. Just peel that off. See I've got a little bit of white quill left on there so I'm just going to try and pick that off or scrape it off. That's not too bad. As long as it's pretty flat you should be okay. So that's the black one peeled. Now we're going to repeat that with the brown. So the same thing. Just come in at the back of the feather. Just a slight cut just to get under the membrane and get the peel started. And then carefully get it to separate. And then just ever so slowly work along the quill and peel it up nice and clean. I'm going to peel this whole brown feather. I probably only need a small amount of it, but I'm going to peel the whole thing. I might do a couple more feathers and do a decorative arrow out of this one. 
I've just started to get a little bit of the quill membrane come up, so I'll just change how I'm peeling it slightly to rectify that. <clears throat> I find if you try and keep the quill straight and peel the membrane off at a big angle, that works the best to keep it clean. And then eventually you'll get to a point where you can't really do that anymore because your fingers are too big. You just cut that off and that's uh, too peeled. So there's our two pieces of peeled feather. Just get the quills out of the way, we don't need those. Right, so back to the base feather. Um, I believe I did this at three inches or three and a half inches. Three and a half inches. So three and a half inches along the feather. I need to put a little mark with the pencil. So three and a half is there. So just put a little pencil mark and then I'm going to put another mark a quarter inch back from that. And that's going to be where that black splice drops in. So you can see I've got it marked on this one. That's where I'm going to drop this black splice in. So, now what we have to do is very carefully, very, very, very carefully, is peel the back of this feather back to that first mark that we just put in. So what I'm going to do is actually put a slight nick in the quill membrane. Just a very slight nick. Just trying not to cut it all the way through. And then the same process, right at the back of the feather, in a small cut to get through the feather membrane, start the peel, and then this one you have to be very, very, very careful not to break the quill or bend the quill too much. I'm going to try and keep it straight like that and peel it, and we want to just very slowly peel down to that first mark that I put in. Once I get to that first mark, I can clip that feather quilt, the membrane off, just like that. <coughs> and you have this piece, so this is where our feather is going to be spliced in. And this last little bit at the back, you just come through and clean that off very, very easily. So we have bare quill, we've got rid of this. This white piece that we've taken out, hold on to that. You might be able to use it in another feather pattern or if you want to reverse um, what this one is, you can make that a brown base or a black base and have a, a white tail on it for the odd feather. But for what I'm doing now, this is ready to be spliced in. So I'm gonna cut, first thing I need to do is put in the black pin stripe. So I need to cut a quarter of an inch of feather quarter of an inch of this black feather. Like that. So there's a quarter inch of the black feather. And now this is the fun part. So we get super glue. <coughs> Just a small dot of super glue on the quill membrane, and then so holding this uh, on vertically on the table, keeping it nice and straight. We lay it down flat and put them together, and then they can be brushed. And sometimes they brush back together really, really easy. Like that brush back together really easy. And that's the spliced in pin strop. And then the next step is to create a brown tail. I'm not happy with how thin the start of this quill is. It's actually narrowed out slightly at the top there. So I'm gonna trim that off where it's just narrowed in because I want it to match the quill of the white feather a bit better. 
from what it was. <clears throat> and we can put that in dry, put it down, and that will show you where to clip it off. Clip that off. Just straighten this up a little bit with your fingers. Try and get it nice and straight so that gluing it is easier. And then I like to do about a quarter inch at a time. So I don't glue, try and glue the whole piece on. Like smaller pieces are easier to glue than larger pieces. So I'll do a small amount of the feather, put that in place, leave it sit for a second and let it dry. And then I'll come in, just gently flex those parts, those uh, pieces apart. And put in the rest of that membrane. And then we can brush these together. So matching up. Matching up the thickness of the quills, the feather themselves, and the quills is pretty crucial in feather splicing because it makes brushing them back together easier or more difficult. This one's being a little bit difficult because the quills aren't quite the same thickness. But there's the spliced feather. So, next thing to do, just leave that sit for a second while I tie it up, cap back on glue. Next thing we'll do is into the cutting jig. I'll just use a wooden cutting jig. Into the jig. Sometimes they don't join up. Sometimes the feathers won't lock together properly. There we go. Got it. Let's trim up that back edge slightly. Cool. So there's the matching feather. There's the two pairs, two feathers matched up. So what I'm going to do now. On this feather that I've just made, I've done it on the other one. I'm just going to cut the end of the feather on a slight angle, just slightly angle the, the quill. It just makes them sit on the arrows a little bit nicer. And that's the two feathers spliced, ready to go on an arrow. First one and the second one. So. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> it is a bit tedious. It, is a, it does take a bit of practice to get really nice clean splices. Um, but matching up the quills, if you're careful when you match the quills up, you'll get much better results than if you just put them on wherever. Um, but I hope that video helps a few guys out in uh, getting started in feather splicing at very least. And um, yeah, have a go at it. See how you can make some really fancy intricate patterns of pinstripes that match cresting and things like that. But I hope that helps. Um, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. There'll be lots more videos of things like that coming, custom arrows, uh, different uh, historical arrow sets, some more bow making stuff. Uh, I plan to do a Australian wood bow build, a Bunnings video build. Um, go into Bunnings and grab all the necessity, necessities to build a bow and then bring them back and get that bow built on camera. So stay tuned for that one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching.